In this video, we're going to go over the differences between valley types and reference types in C-sharp. It is extremely important to know the differences so you understand what your code is actually doing. Let's begin. Okay, so in C-sharp, you have several types and mainly they are either valley types or reference types. They behave quite differently and can lead to a lot of confusion if you don't know how they actually work. Reference types store references to their data, whereas valley types directly contain their data. An example of valley types are simple types. So numeric values like ints or floats, enums and booleans are all valley types. Reference types are classes and objects. However, structs are valley types. So that's the most important thing to remember, especially when it comes to unity dots, which is mainly based on structs and not classes. Arrays of simple types are also reference types as are strings. So with reference types, you can have multiple variables holding references to the same exact object. Whereas with valley types, each time you do an assignment, you are making a copy of the underlying data. Another difference is reference types can be null, whereas valley types cannot. So for example, if you have an enum for your weapon types and the player doesn't have any weapon, then you cannot set it to null. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Let's look at some code to see how they behave differently. Okay, so over here I have a simple script and for example, let's define an int, which is a valley type. So here the variable i contains the value seven. But now if we make an object, now here the variable does not contain this particular object, but rather it contains a reference that points to this object. So let's test this with a simple class. So down here, let's define a class. All right, so here we have a very simple class that contains a single int field. Now let's create an object of this type. So here we do new my class and we pass in our parameter value, okay? So here we are creating our object and now let's store it in a variable type my class so here we have this object being assigned to this variable. Now let's make another variable of the same type and we're going to assign it to the same object. Okay, so here we have two different variables. Now if we modify the value on the second one, so we modify the value on the second one and then let's do a simple log on the first value. Okay, so now let's see what happens. Is it going to print seven or five? And there's the console saying five. So what we have here is an example of a reference type. Both of these variables are just holding references and not the actual object. Both of them are referencing the same single instance of this object. So by going through either variable and modifying it, we are actually modifying the underlying object. So that's how reference types work. Now let's look at value types. So let's define a simple int. Now let's define a second int and let's do the same assignment that we did on the class test. And now here we modify the value of B. So now the question is, what do you think the value will be when we look into A? So let's see if it says seven or five. And there it is and the answer is seven. So the reason is because an int is a value type and not a reference type. So when we assign A to the variable B, we are not passing a reference to the original data, but rather a copy of that original data. So first we assign seven into A, then we're assigning a copy of what's on A, so a copy of seven onto B, and then here we're modifying the copy inside B, which has no relation to the data inside of A. And now the scenario where it's most important to know this difference is when working with structs. When writing Unity dots code, you will mainly be working with structs, so it's very important to learn this. So here, let's copy pretty much the same structure of our class, except we're going to make it a struct. So there it is, exactly the same structure, except this is a class and this is a struct. And now let's go up here and copy the exact same test. All right, so here we have the same test, one with classes and one with structs. So we first create our object, then we assign a second variable to the first object, and we modify the second object, and then we print what's on the first object. All right, so let's test. And yep, there it is with a class, we have a value of five, but with a struct, we have a value of seven. 
So here we're doing the exact same actions and this difference is exactly the difference between value types and reference types. Structs are value types, so when we assign this object into this second variable, we're not passing a reference to the first object, but rather a copy of that object. So each of these variables contains a different instance of our struct. And when we modify the second one, we're only modifying the copy inside the second variable. So the first one does not get modified at all. Whereas with the class, we have our variables holding references to the original object. So modifying either of them modifies the underlying object that both of them reference. So now let's look at what this means in Unity Dots. Okay, so down here, let's make a simple job. All right, here's our basic job. We just implement iJob, that's it. And now, as you know, one of the limitations inside jobs is we cannot use reference types, only value types. So over here, we cannot have a field for our my class, but we can have a field for our my struct. So inside, let's say we want to do some math and increase all of the values inside an array. So here, as you can see, if we try to use a my class inside our native array, we have an error. We cannot use this but we can use our my struct. Now, one thing, which is normal arrays are actually reference types, but native array is a special type of array to work specifically with the job system. So now here on our execute method, let's simply cycle through all the elements in the array. All right, so there it is, very simple. We cycle through the array, we grab the element in that position and we increase the underlying value. So now up here, let's test this out. All right, so here we're instantiating our native array. We're starting it with three elements. Then we create our job, we pass in our native array, and then we run our job. So now afterwards, let's cycle through our native array and do a debug log. All right, so just like that, we should be able to see all of these values increase by one. Let's see. And nope, what we have here are still the original values. So what's happening here is related to structs being a value type and not a reference type. If we were working with a class, this would work since we would be modifying the underlying object. But since here we are working with structs, when we modify this value, we are modifying the copy that was assigned into this variable. So when working the structs, we can modify our data just like this, but afterwards we need to place our updated copy back in the array. So we go back into the native array on the same index and we place our struct. And now if we test, and yep, there it is. Now it's correctly incrementing all of the values. So this is one of the things you have to watch out for when working with structs. Now there is one way you can work with value types as if they were reference types. So let's say in here we have a function that takes an int and increments it. So we have a function that increments an int, up here we define an int, we call the function, and then we do a log on the i. Now as you might guess, what we're doing here is incrementing the copy that this function receives and not the underlying variable in here. So just like that, we still have a 5 inside of our variable. However, what we can do is add the ref keyword. We add it both on the definition of the parameter as well as in here. Now what this does is instead of passing a copy of data, we're passing the reference, even though we're using a value types. And yep, just like that, we are modifying the original variable, even though it is a value type. Also, as I said before, value types cannot be null. So for example, we cannot do an int i equals null. As you can see, it's an error. However, C Sharp has an interesting feature called nullables. So if we define our int and put a question mark at the end, by doing so, this makes it a nullable. So we can now set the variable to null. Putting a question mark at the end is the same thing as defining it as nullable of type. So here, this is the underlying type, which as you can see, takes the T as a struct or a value type. And you can see it has a bunch of functions to test if it has a value and to get the underlying value. So for example, we could have a enum for our weapon types.
And here we have a variable for the weapon that the player is currently holding. And again, weapon types is in enum, which is a value type, so we cannot set it directly to null. So in this case, for example, we could make this nullable, and then we could define it as null if the player was not holding any weapons. So here we learned about the differences between value types and reference types. This is extremely important to know, especially when working with Unity Dots. In order to benefit from the massive performance boosts of the job system and burst, we need to work with structs, so we need to know how they will behave. Now that you have this knowledge, you will no longer be confused when making a job and the contents are not updated. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.